Just when I thought that I'd broken free, I feel the sirens call. Head above water, a thousand seas, rising back up just to fall. Guess you could say I'm scared to look in the mirror. Cause what if I'm the very thing I fear? And the heavy silence can be any clear. Tells me the lies I wanna hear. Follow, follow me down. Oh, the sweetest sound. Lies to the roof now. Lie me in. Follow, follow me down. India's independence was one of the most remarkable days of Indian history. But before we get to the root cause of how this independence happened, it's very important for us to know what caused this independence to happen. After all, having to get independence means that India was originally captured. As we discussed in part one, we talked briefly over the fact that British and Britain areas around surrounded India and had captured the Indian area, and there was a lot of peaceful protest by Gandhi, which was one of the leaders of these peaceful protests, but I think it's to dig more deeper into what really was the motive that made um, Britain capture India, and there was a lot to talk about, so this part is dedicated to India's independence and a part of India and Pakistan today. So, uh, let's start with the first part that we're going to look at, which is how it was captured. Looking at a main motive of Britain capturing India, there was actually one primary motive they did that. You know, a country is not going to spend all their time over capturing another area or imperializing it without a benefit of them, right? It's not always about land, it's sometimes about what benefits them. And for that case, the benefit was India was actually very rich in natural resources. They had a lot of amazing stuff like cotton and textiles and all of this really cool stuff that was produced in India, some which was natural resources like I stated, and some which was just pure talent. And one of the reasons they captured was to get benefits of that. What they would do is they would not let India drive off of their resources, they would take those, they would export them to Britain, they would make whatever, and then they would re-import or export them back to India and then sell it for a higher price salt cotton and then a lot of these really cool textiles that was part of the culture was infuriated by this type of behavior also looking into a factor playing by numbers you can clearly kind of see that before this happened there was a lot of movements that helped which was conducted by gandhi and that's one of the reasons they left from this was gandhi per you know, providing this knowledge and encouraging people to why buy stuff when we can get it. And one of these was the Salt March, which was, Brit um, it was Britain sold, or sold that salt that was in India to like very high in price. And Gandhi said, well, there's salt in the water. Why don't we just, why are we paying for something that we can get for free? And this caused a big, big, big um, problem with Britain because they're not making what they wanted from capturing them so this was one of the big evident pieces of why they captured india and the way it is on the screen you guys can kind of see there is a lot of important demographics of india's economy india has a mixed economy you know a lot half of the workers actually rely on agriculture which was one of the big reasons because india has a big big huge agriculture area the cost of living is lower than the united states so one of the other reasons this was done is because originally they wanted to settle a lot of people in India, because of course it's easier, it's rich, and or it's less expensive, they also wanted to uh, put businesses there because of course people are so desperate that they're willing to work for a little amount of money. The Indian middle class is a bigger class or bitter, bigger than the U U.S. middle class, so that was another benefit. Um, it's also an attractive country for outscoring such as call centers, a lot of a lot of jobs that can be put in India for much cheaper than in other countries. 
and then the Bollywood contributions to billions into India's GDP. And all these facts, while they are in more of today's day, these a lot of them pay, a lot of them played a factor in um, the period when British was or Britain was capturing India and the British what the British wanted to use for in that sense. some of the prominent things when India was originally getting captured to when it was getting freed there's a lot of violence a lot of attacks a lot of physical and very eye-opening and things on as the screen you can see there's bombs being placed you know there's fights there's wars there's soldiers there's freedom fighters there's um, British British soldiers there's just people against people and this was one of the biggest reasons that there was two million deaths in the process of all of this including when India was split into four parts as known today India Pakistan East or Bangladesh excuse me and Kashmir which is kind of like neither it's it's not a country really but it's you know a part right now since it's not fully into one area but this is a big very a big rooted cause of why this type of issues happened and we'll get later into talking about why the British left at the time they left and why this civil uh, war that was happening inside of India was caused by Britain and we'll get more into that part in the future topics of today's part so let's get into the next part Usually when a country imperializes another country, it's most likely because the country that imperializes the country thinks that their way of living, their beliefs, their religion, their culture is more superior compared to the country they're imperializing. And the main motive for that is to make the country they are imperializing follow their way. And so that strives the question with inequality. Inequality's basic term is when one Air, one statement or I should say one group or one person or s one at least one human being out of a certain vast majority is treated differently and it's usually a negative for one side if they're treated better than other people that's a negative for the other people if they're treated lower than other people that's a negative for the person so um this inequality strives from imperializing. Imperializing and inequality go hand in hand together. When you imperialize something, you're also striving for inequality. You are telling people that their way of living is inferior compared to yours, and yours is the superiorist way. Which was one point that I brought up earlier was Britain imperialized India for a reason, thinking that they could use India for their benefits. Of course now that if they're going to lift these restrictions or if they're going to put these restrictions for people, they are only putting them for Indians um, in the area, the native area of India. And so this drives the question of inequality. And so I did some research in the web and I'm going to talk more about that in a future clip right now in a bit. But I wanted to quickly precap over that India was Indians in particular were treated differently. They were told to live the way the British were, but they were also told to be lower than them, so that their job was to be this like um, how should I say like this uh, servant type of kind of figure. And you know, you look at the caste system and all this type of stuff that plays a role into it. And I'm going to talk more about that right this second. <laughs> Okay guys, so on the screen you can see there is a picture of this, um, you know, a British guy and there, I'm pretty sure there's an Indian dude who's kind of like rubbing this person's feet and this shows a lot about the way inequality starts off with and I'm gonna have more images in a second but this kind of states the factor that, you know, Indians were inferior or, well, okay, let me rephrase this, that time British were considered superior or they considered themselves superior and 
that was the cause of this like entire um i want to say like kind of like this like empire vibe you know if you understand what i mean so you know the indians like i was talking about were kind of treated like servants they were treated like people that didn't really deserve to be higher class there's of course certain selected individuals that actually worked for british and they were higher up in class status so they did not have to do stuff like this but they still were under the rule of you know british and britain and all that type of stuff another image you can see a lot of these images coming up are political cartoon stuff they're just a lot of this like you know um kind of like i don't know how to describe them some are political cartoons and then some are just kind of this like representation of how stuff played out no one can change history but people can definitely manipulate it so from the points of this all of these kind of show a different point of view and i'm going to let you guys look at the rest right now Just when I thought that I'd broken free I feel the sirens call Hiding in the night Shadows peek Now coming on to one of the very pivotal people in this part of India's independence, Mahatma Gandhi. So this person right here on the screen, as you can see pictures kind of going through as I talk about him, is a very sophisticated young man. And I'm pretty sure everyone is aware of him and his contrib contributions. I said that so weirdly. <laughs> Contributes to India. And I want to first of all just say there is a level of braveness that this guy has shown. And it's very, very, very dedicated to how we should all act and make a change he was a very non-violent person and strived into non-violent protest of course he wanted to protest but he did it in the most safe non-violent and he was very about that life of not wanting to hurt anyone not wanting to harm anyone not wanting to do any of that type of stuff and it was very very um dedicated of him to really focus on how should I say it? Like, to focus on what he wanted to do. His strategy was no violence to try to win people. You know, the common phrase, kill them with kindness, kind of relates to Mahatma Gandhi's um, attempt to, you know, proceed and do uh, this protest without anyone getting hurt. He's very infamous for not just leading the entire nation, but to encourage them to fight for their rights. He's led really very powerful movements, one such as the Salt March, which we have talked about in part of this episode or part already. Um, he's also um, not just Mahatma Gandhi. He's not known just for his freedom fighting and for what he's done to free India, but he's also known for his previous stuff that he's done before. He's notorious for this, which was he, his story about when he was on a train and he got kicked out after even buying it because he was. Indian and he was inferior to you know the British people in that train and his story is very powerful very touching on why he wanted to subjectively um, fight for India's passion he's also known for wearing this one very simple outfit it's kind of just like cloth just all like a long cloth um, kind of like all over his body I don't know how to describe but it's like this very nice type of um thing which i think is really cool um and then he's very simple in just you know that same attire he's went to jail many times for his protests but he's never stopped he's encouraged people there was actually a point where um he was put in jail and they did the no water protest in jail um and you know if you don't have water for a very long time you're going to die so gandhi actually led this protest stating that he was going to do it and he didn't want anyone else to do it unless they were very dedicated to it. And a lot of people did it that were in jail and it was basically to make British people, Britain people who were in charge of the jail to let them out for not doing anything wrong because they didn't do anything wrong. They peacefully protested and they got arrested for no reason and 
if they don't drink water they're going to die and that's not what they wanted they wanted them to stay alive because then it's now a different lawsuit right so they did this non-water protest which actually ended up becoming successful a lot of people were about to break but um somehow just everything went like it did some really cool facts is he's actually notorious for walking and he's walked 79,000 kilometers which um i want to just want to first of all say that is crazy um to think about like that many kilometers in general i cannot imagine and kilometers are like how should i say it they're just they're bigger right so that's the equivalent to forty nine thousand miles plus that's forty nine thousand miles which also this is a really cool fact his entire years of um, his life, he he's walked enough to circle, it's the equivalent to circling the earth twice, which is crazy. He's walked about 18 kilometers every day for nearly 40 years, which is crazy, and a lot of this was to protest, a lot of this was to get to one area and other he believed in, really what he had as a person, and I think that's just an amazing thing that he contributed to. He encouraged people to you know, stop buying stuff from from Britain when they could get it for free in their area. So that he's a very smart and intelligent guy. He really had a lot of passion to save the country, and he was one of the big and prominent rules that helped guide all these Indians to reach their freedom. And uh, you know, anything is just amazing to see how he chose such a hard, hard thing that everyone's so scared to tackle, and how he got the entire nation to fight back. So that was Mahatma Gandhi, and uh, here are some more pictures, and then let's get to the next topic. Alongside with Mahatma Gandhi, there is actually a lot of more, a lot more freedom fighters. There was approximately, I mean, countless people who worked with protests and supported Gandhi's protests who actually risked their own lives and um, practically did everything they had in their power to give their country the freedom. And it's really important to recognize these people. So, on the screen, there is just collages of a lot of these people who supported and were freedom fighters they came out of their way from the public and they did much 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 more work um and there's some real pictures there's some um i think illustrated pictures because not this is such an old era that not a lot of these pictures were available at that time and this era is very powerful has a very powerful meaning over the fact that you know as a country they had to work together and Gandhi was also a freedom fighter, but alongside a lot of these people who don't get as much recognition also deserve the same amount are also here on the screen. So I'm going to let some music play and tribute to these guys. They did a lot of a lot of help to free their country, India. The house is burning. So this is a second to last topic that we're going to talk about, but this was one of the most big important important remarks, which was India's freedom. So on August 15, um, India finally fought for their freedom, and they finally gained it, leaving a lot of a lot of damage, which we'll talk about in the next part and a little bit here in a second. Um, but after British finally declared, Britain declared that they were going to leave, um, and you know, leave India, there was some stuff, so there was actually a civil war that striked in India, which caused division and caused India and Pakistan, as we know today, to split into two, um, which will be more focused on the next part. And this, you know, a lot of people say they have a, a thoughts on this, but overall, Gandhi and his movement and the Freedom Fighters movement and everyone's movement on getting their country free ultimately was done. But what they didn't know was what was going to come with this they asked for freedom but they got more than freedom so 
this was more of something I like to call like a plot twist because they, you know, everything looked like it was going to be fine just as it got even worse. So it was kind of just a little, you know, iffy wiffy situation, I guess to say. Unfortunately, with India's freedom, the conflict didn't end there. And the series is the document's entire name is one into four and well, India was eventually divided into four parts as known as today, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and uh, an area that is not really claimed by India nor Pakistan, which is Kashmir. So this was a very also prominent war that played in and a lot of speculations happened that Britain left because they know this war was going to break out and they left at this period because they didn't want any of their supplies or any of that type of stuff to go low or for them to get involved in the conflict. They kind of stirred the entire pot and then you know took the spoon out but kept the riffles going. So it was a pretty it was a pretty crazy, you know, journey and stuff, but that's all and uh, come back next week for part three of me talking more in depth about India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Kashmir. Next on the one into four documentary. It's so crazy with the death toll you guys. 11.2 million people which is 77.4% were displaced and that's crazy to think about and over 10 million people suspected to be killed in this big just riot of partition of India and Pakistan. Just when I thought that I'd broken free I feel the sirens call Head above water, a thousand seas Rising back up just to fall Guess you could say I'm scared to look in the mirror Cause what if I'm the very thing I fear And the heavy silence can be any clear Tells me the lies I wanna hear Follow me down home The sweetest sound Lies to the room and lure me in Follow me down Echo my name like you know me well Tell me there's no turning back Pocketing secrets I'll never tell Shadows drip into the black Hostage to the whispers drawing me closer Dancing on the edge of the Oh.